All right. Do some building. So, this is the TBS Source 1 B3. I've already got one of these that I run digital. But that's nice. Makes me feel real smart. But since parts are hard to find, I figured I would make an analog because those are more readily available. Considering the fact that digital is only like a year, maybe a year and a half old. So we got frame, um, this will be your bottom plate, your top plate, and then your sandwiching plate to kind of press everything together as far as your legs and all that stuff goes, or your arms. So I actually believe it's going to go like this, maybe, it does. yeah it goes like this. And then it has 30-30, but we're going to be running 20-20. I got this little 2020 stack right here. Uh, yeah, it'll fit. You, yeah, it'll fly. So normally I run 3030s on bigger drones, but like I said, with parts being hard to find, it just it's gonna be a beater quad anyways. I'm not I'm not planning to uh, treat this one too nicely. And I'm going to use stock hardware, which if you've seen my digital TBS, it's running like a green hardware, which looks really nice. So we can separate these. Each other and put them right here. I'm just gonna try to keep up with my mess. I hate whenever it gets crazy looking. And uh, these we're gonna use normally for the stack, but since my stack is a 2020 and these won't go inside, I'm gonna have to use a different one. Actually, I think this one takes a 30 30. Yeah, this one takes a 30 30. So we might try and play with this flight one. Possibly. Well, no, actually, we can use these for the VTX because the VTX is a 3030. So, well, 3030 the VTX is hoping to be able to come up and add the stack after. So, I might just. Might have a solution here. Maybe I can. Screw it in right there. Whenever I screw, no, because that's going to mess with my stack screws or my stack, my standoffs. Man, it's harder than it had to be. <clears throat> All right. This one, which will go all the way through. I'd rather run one that's not going to go all the way through, but just enough. So, yeah, let's go ahead and slap it in. Slap it on top. And, I mean, that'll do. It, it'll have plenty of other screws and bolts inside of it, so that should be fine. So... Like I said, normally it's a 30-30 stack that goes in here, but we've got the option for 2020. And actually, I should probably set some bolts up for that before I start this, but I learned from trial and error today.
And I'm not tightening all the way either. So now that the arms are in, we'll go ahead and lock these bad boys down. Get the other screw. And I'm not tightening all the way yet. And I honestly recommend using Loctite when doing this. Like I said, this is just a beater drone, so I really don't care. Give these a final tightening. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I just do this out of habit from working on cars. This one could use a little bit more. That'll do it for it. Okay. So that's going to be our base. We're going to add our electronics, camera, and everything else up top. Well, camera goes here. We're going to add everything else. Over. Oh, no, camera does go here. So we'll add everything over here camera, VTX. Um, stack's going to go in the middle. Probably should have. Slap some stack screws in there before I tighten that down, but we'll see if that's going to come back and bite me in the ass later. Alright, so... Probably will. An alarm going off. Hope I didn't get picked up. <laughs> All right. 
so now that that is done, I think I think I did kind of fuck myself. We'll see. We will see. All right, so. Huh. Once we get the top lid on, that'll be our frame. All right, so when I got this frame, the motors were pre-soldered on. Um, I got this, uh, not the frame, but when I got this ESC, I got it from a buddy of mine. Um, so the ESC and the flight controller he had gave me because he wasn't using them no more. Um, so I'm installing the motors right now, and I'll do a full install of the last one. That way you guys don't have to watch me painstakingly go through every single motor. But these are on. This one's on, and then these two are the last ones. So when I get to this one, I will record that. All right, so for motor installs, the way I run about it is I take, oops, don't do that. I take one, and these are um, these kind right here, the, uh, I got that gnarl at the end so you can kind of get some finger grip on them. So what I do is I go into the first one. And then I do a second one after I line up all the holes. And I do use four motor screws, so. And then I use the old turning tool. So I think these might be a little too big for these motors. In which case I'll use smaller screws if that does happen. So the whole shebang, this is a Falco or Race flight, one of the two. I have flight controller, it's got beta flight on it though. But it's um, essentially plug and play. So I'm gonna put some gummies in here and I'm going to solder up to it. Okay, so LED and then buzzer, boot button. Now that, you don't want that. That's not good. That's going to cause a bunch of crap flight characteristics. And we want this to, uh, to not go through that. So, I'm going to get some gummies in here. I'm going to start slapping harnesses and stuff. I need to fix the harness. I'm not using this antenna either. These are crap antennas. These little whip ones, these are horrible. I wouldn't, I would only use these on tiny whoops. But, uh, this only takes between no, it doesn't take between 6 and 40. It showed an input of 7 and 24 volts. But right here it's showing 6 and 40 volts. So I should be able to just run this on 6S. I don't know though. But I got, I got step downs anyways. I bought some Becks. So I'll probably just run it to a back. So we'll do our input voltage, right? We'll have a negative and a positive. And of course, these are going to be soldered in. And those will be our, our inputs. And then our output, 
that will run to this will be between 5 and 12 volts. We're about to solder on the XT60 and the capacitor, which is what we're going to use for power. Now with this right here, I'm going to try to clean it up some. Um, it doesn't look like it's bad solder, it just doesn't look like it fully covered the pad. So I got my soldering iron heating up. I got it connected to a LiPo, so it might take a little bit longer than normal. I'm going up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then once we get that soldered up, uh, I'm going to work on pinning out the uh, VTX and the uh, uh, receiver as well because they pin to the flight controller. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to make this heat transference go nicely. I just want to get like a nice spread across this pad. iron cooled down while I was soldering. That's weird. Keeps cooling down while I solder. If it continues to do that, I might be swapping over to a wall outlet because I don't, I don't need a cold soldering gun. Or soldering iron. Set that down there. We had a little bit of drip down right there, but that's a easy fix normally. But because I said it's an easy fix, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Because why not, right? All right, so we're at 400 again. Let's get positive to positive and negative to negative. I'm actually going to add some more solder to these as well. This is running off of the factory solder. And I like my stuff a little bit better because my stuff is leaded. Leaded solder always does the job. Negative attached for or in the positive first and then we'll go negative I like these because they lock in place they're very nice as far as making this stuff easier so we'll first heat up this and then we'll make contact Oops. And 
let's get this negative on. Now, on your first couple of builds, you'll notice that these power wires are kind of a pain in the ass. These bigger, thicker gauge ones. But once you get a couple of them in, you'll, you'll start to uh, establish some kind of a working process. clipped on. My iron keeps dropping temp on me, so I'm probably going to plug it into a power terminal. I'll be right back. Or into a wall outlet. Sorry about that. So let me go into a wall outlet. And, uh, I'll be right back with you guys. And this is what it looks like with wall power. You see it's like limitless. That <laughs> shit is fast. So that'll do it for those. Let me trim and prep this. Uh, almost at XT60 again. Uh, capacitor. Okay, so this one's gonna have to come down a tiny bit. All right, that'll do. So I'm just going to tend these up really fast. Try not to leave too much heat on a capacitor because shit can go really bad. And then what I like to do is I like to try and shape them. All right. So we got that switch to the right direction now. So it'll be going the way it needs to go. These are always going to be like that. But just know that they're properly soldered on whenever you can do shit like that with it. So with that being said, I need to figure out the... Um, pin out for these items here. I got the camera here because I know the camera will go into one of these, the receiver will go into one of these, and the BTX will go into one of these. So let me figure out which is which, get them all plugged up, and I will be right back with you because I got pins that'll match these two. Ooh, one of those pins is bad. It's pushed off to the side. I really don't want to use this. Uh, flight controller but I don't have screws small enough for this one currently so we'll just roll with the flow roll with the flow all right so this is where we are right now we got everything pinned which I did off camera because 
honestly, it's just a bunch of boring stuff. It's uh, really just, you know, popping wires out, putting them in place, and just following wiring diagrams. Nothing too interesting. There was really not a lot of soldering on this one. Like I said, I got the board and the, uh, I got the ESC and the flight controller from a friend of mine, so I didn't have to really solder the wires on for the motors. They were already soldered on uh, prior to me receiving it. Um, I repinned out the um, BTX. Um, I pinned out the tra transmitter receiver. I pinned out the camera, and that's that was it. it was just matching pins, and um, that's fairly simple. So for the build, we got a Flight One um, flight controller. It's the multi, or sorry about that, the millivolt OSD B1 um, with the Schizo 32 amp, or sorry about that, with the Schizo BL Heli 32 bit ESCs. I believe they're 50 amp ESCs. I could be wrong. I'm not too positive. And then, of course, I run Crossfire, which I repinned my Crossfire, my crossfire receiver. I just soldered on this piece right here, which was just four little, just, just little dabs of solder. And um, I got the motors on for right now, but I'm printing uh, skid pads for it. So the motors are only connected by one one screw which is uh right right there um i soldered the xt60 lead with the um capacitor in place i printed this rear piece for the immortal t which if you've ever flown with me or if you know me i really don't fly immortal t's um, but that's really just because I don't, they, they get caught up and chopped up in props and stuff whenever you wreck. So I prefer to run the immortal L's like I have on this build right here. That's what I prefer is the immortal L. So at this point, it's just running everything into beta flight and getting everything uh, going from there.